attributes and transformations of reciprocal functions. So the reciprocal function, parent function, is y equals 1 over x. If we were, look, if we were to look at the graph of it, let's form an xy table, choose some numbers for x, and then substitute those in to the equation y equals 1 over x to figure out the y coordinates. So substituting in negative 2, we get negative 1 half. Substituting in negative 1, we get 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. 1 over negative 1 half is negative 2. 1 over negative 1 fourth is negative 4. 1 over 0 is undefined. 1 over 1 fourth is 4. 1 over 1 half is 2. 1 over 1 is 1, 1 over 2 is 1 half. So let's look at a sketch of the graph, plotting the points that we have. Negative 2, negative 1 half, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1 half, negative 2, negative 1 fourth, negative 4, 1 fourth, 4, one half two one one two one half and sketching in we see the function shown in green so this is what the reciprocal function looks like and this function has two asymptotes So we've got a horizontal one on the x-axis and a vertical one on the y-axis. So the function gets closer and closer to these axes but never actually touches them. And as you've noticed, there's two different parts to this graph. It's discontinuous. And, and these parts are called branches. So some things to note, there, there's no x-intercept and no y-intercept. The domain are all real numbers except x that cannot equal 0. The range is all real numbers except y does not equal 0. The x axis, as I stated, is a horizontal asymptote. And the y axis is a vertical asymptote. So these are key features of the reciprocal function. So now we're going to start looking at the transformations, and these are the same transformations that we have looked at all year long with different functions. So vertical stretches and compressions. So if I'm always using f of x equals 1 over x as my starting point, I could have f of x equals 6 over x. I could have f of x equals 0 0.25 over x. And the graph of these three, color-coded, is shown here. So 6 over x is this red function, and this is a vertical stretch. 0.25 over x is the blue function. This is a vertical compression. So just like in the past, if we are multiplying our function by some a, so a times 1 over x is just a over x, this is a vertical stretch if the absolute value of a is greater than 1 and a vertical compression if the absolute value of a is less than 1. Okay, reflection over the x-axis. So f of x equals 1 over x is our starting point. f of x equals negative 1 over x, so the negative out front, is our reflection. So we see our reflected function in purple. The negative means you're reflecting over the x-axis. Vertical translations. So we've got our baseline. Then f of x equals 1 over x plus 2. Notice the plus 2 is not part of the fraction. And f of x equals 1 over x minus 3. Again, the minus 3 is not part of the fraction. Here are our three graphs for comparison. So the black one is our parent function. And then 1 over x plus 2 is the function in red. 
This is a vertical translation up to. So not only does it translate up to, but its horizontal asymptote translates up to. So the horizontal asymptote for this function is y equals 2. You can see that, or it looks like it's going to be there. So our blue function, I'm not going to try to point to both parts, is this, so 1 over x minus 3 is pointing to our blue function. This is a function that's translated three units down. So consequently, our horizontal asymptote is also translated three units down. So now it's not the x-axis, now it's y equals negative three. You can see that here. So just as a generalization, f of x plus c is translated c units up f of x minus c is translated c units down. Okay, we still also have horizontal translations. Here's our parent function, and then f of x equals 1 over x minus 2, and the minus 2 is part of the denominator, and f of x equals 1 over x plus 3, with the plus 3 as part of the denominator. Here's our here are our graphs for comparison. So 1 over x minus 2 is the red graph. And this is translated two units, right? So consequently, our vertical asymptote is also translated two units, right? And that's at x equals 2, shown here. And 1 over x plus 3 is the blue function, which is three units left. And our vertical asymptote goes three units left to x equals negative three, shown here. So in, in general, f of x minus c, c units right, f of x plus c is translated c units left. Okay, so let's look at an example where we, where we go backwards. Let's write the equation for the following function. So here we see a reciprocal function, but it looks like it has a couple of translations. So let's identify the asymptotes. So it looks like we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 4, and it looks like we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 5. So if I want to write the equation for this, start with 1 over x, and then the plus 5, because I always do the opposite number when I'm with the x in implied parentheses. So this is showing the translation 5 units left. Minus 4. 